start tonight with the Helena Huskies hosting Jackson Olin. Jackson Olin's Lamarius Bird gives to Jabari Polnitz for a 10-yard gain. J.O. playing Helena tough tonight. Four plays later, Lamarius Bird passes to Tyke Thomas for the touchdown. It's 7-6 J.O. at the half. Start of the third, Helena punts to J.O. And it's going to be Aiden Moody who will receive it at the 21-yard line. And then he'll fake the handoff, and he'll return it all the way back for a 79-yard touchdown. But Helena would come back and win this game 16-13. to There were two colossal 6A, 7A matchups tonight. Hoover Mountain Brook highlights and postgame reaction coming to you in a few. But first, the Thompson Warriors, three-time defending 7A champs, hosting 6A King Clay Charcoal. The home team drew first blood. A.J. Green finds a hole. Then it's a foot race, 56 yards to the end zone, 7-0 Thompson. Now, the Warriors' defense has been good all season, and they were not letting up tonight. As Caleb Ballard with the TFL on Kamari McClellan to pin the Cougars deep in their own territory. Late in the first quarter, it's Zach Sims connecting with Ryan Walker for a huge gain inside the 10. That led to a fuel goal. Thompson up 10-0. 28 seconds to go in the half. Athleticism on display. Kamari McClellan hits a leaping Mario Craver. Craver spins and scores. And it's a 10-7 game at the half. Now in the second half, the Warriors ground game attacked with more of A.J. Green, who ran for 150 yards tonight. This for 25. It's 17-7 Warriors. But how about sophomore Aaron Osley, who bulldozes past defenders for a 78-yard touchdown. And Clay Chalkwell was down 17-14. Now, Clay Chalkwell with the ball under two minutes remaining in regulation. But McClellan is going to be picked off by Jake Ivey. And that seals the deal for Thompson. They beat Clay Chalkwell 17 to 14. Here's Coach Mark Freeman after the game. I, I got a lot of respect for Drew. Known him for years, and they do a great job over there. And, you know, I think we played the three best teams we could play out of region and I think if we'll just stick with it, I think those three games will help us. The kids had to endure a little bit about the first two games, but those, two, those first two games are what we're living off of right now. And um, I'm, I'm proud of our kids. I'm proud of the way they, they responded tonight. We had some negative uh, plays in the game that we bounced back from. Good teams will bounce back from negative plays and they play 48 minutes and that's a good football team. And man, I wish them the best over there, but I'm proud of our coaches and our players tonight. Thompson now 4-2 and two after knocking off Clay Chalkville. The Pinson Valley Indians had an impressive win over Oxford in last week's My 68 Game of the Week. Tonight, the Indians ranked 8th and 6A at 10th ranked Homewood. Homewood first drive is 3rd and 9. Woods Ray drops back, but he's picked off by Pinson Valley's Tevis Metcalf, who will then take the ball, weave through the offense, and get to the Homewood 25 before he's taken down. And the Indians cash in on the turnover. Taurus Chambers barrels ahead for the touchdown to put Pinson Valley up 7-0. Late in the second quarter, that Pinson Valley defense just hands everywhere. The ball is going to come loose. Rod Ivey will recover. And then uh, here's the interception again by Woods Ray right there. And uh, it's a hard-fought battle, but it's won by Pinson Valley. 21-13, the final score. Pleasant Grove at Parker, the coaching cousins, Daryl LeBeau and Frank Warren. And this is Parker's Naeem Oxford taking a bubble screen and just dashing 70 yards to the house for the thundering herd. And then a couple of seniors link up as Tyson Allen will hit Gerald Reynolds in stride. And after breaking a tackle there, that made it 15 to seven, the Parker thundering herd over Pleasant Grove. Pleasant Grove a little more methodical. They tie the game here after a massive 15 play drive. And it's capped by Colin Moore with a touchdown off the little Utah pass. And then Eric Hanley will find Clarence Taylor for the equalizing two point conversion. Not sure if we have a final on this game yet. If we do before the end of the show, we will let you know. Moody rocking along at 5-0, taking on Shelby County, 3-1 since 2009. First quarter, Cole McCarty, short pass to Blaine Burke. Burke gets the block. He'll go 80 yards to the house, and that made it 7-0. Should say Shelby County, 3-1 for the first time since 2009. Next drive for Moody Burke, 
labeled as an athlete on the Blue Devils roster. Well, he takes the handoff, and then this is athleticism. 14 nothing after the touchdown, Moody on top. Second quarter now, McCarty with a nice pass in the corner of the end zone to Davion Dozier. And that made it 21 nothing, Moody. And then on the next drive, same result, McCarty scrambles, will find Dozier in almost the same spot of the end zone for the score. Moody was up 40 to nothing at the half and wins 47 to nothing. They are 6 and 0. Coming up on the Blitz, the other incredibly huge matchup of the night, the Hoover Bucks and the Mountain Brook Spartans. The showdown at Spartan Stadium is just ahead. Let's check on the Coleman Bearcats hosting Mortimer Jordan tonight. The Bearcats, Ryan Skinner, hands off to Larry Turner for a Coleman touchdown. Cats go up 13 to nothing. Now the Blue Devils in the Wildcat near the goal line. Terrence Gaines takes the snap, walks into the end zone to get MJ on the board. And here's Coleman again. Skinner throwing a pass. It, it could have been intercepted, but look at the play Wyatt Buchanan makes to come down with a football. Next play, Skinner throws to Nathan Zills on the screen and Zills breaks the tackle and takes it to the house. The Blue Devils come back, but Coleman hangs on 26 to 24. And this just in Pleasant Grove with a 49 to 28 win over Parker. So in the Battle of the Cousins, it's Daryl LeBeau's Pleasant Grove Spartans winning over the Parker Thundering Herds, uh, Thundering Herd rather led by Frank Warren. Now that other 6A, 7A marquee matchup, Hoover ranked fourth in 7A at Mountain Brook, the second ranked team in 6A. The Bucks 23 and one in the last 24 meetings with the Spartans are early on. The Bucks go to the air. Phillip Smith airing it out deep. Jordan Woolen will make the snag, a pickup of 37. Two plays later, Caleb Jackson keeps the legs churning and finds the goal line, breaks the plane. It's a touchdown for the Buccaneers, and it's 7-0 Hoover. On the ensuing possession, here comes Sparty. Cole Gamble finds a crease. He explodes into the second level, 44 yards for the touchdown, and we're tied at 7. This became a defensive struggle. Nothing going in the second or third quarter, so on to the fourth. And the biggest play of the game, a heave from Smith into the end zone, and it's Woolen who will make the grab for a huge play. at 17-7 Hoover. Then following a safety, it's 19-7 Bucks, and this the nail in the coffin. A third and long slant route to Frederick Dunson, and he'll go the distance, 55 yards to the end zone. It's the Hoover Bucks beating Mountain Brook, handing the Spartans their first loss. 26 to 14. Here are Coach Wade Waldrop and quarterback Phillip Smith. There's no doubt it was a war, and we knew it was going to be a war. Uh, I, I still think they're the most complete team we've played all year long. So proud of our guys tonight for how hard we played. I thought we fought really hard. Um, that's a good team. You know, I think we beat a good team tonight. I'm going to tell you what, I love playing here. I love this environment. It was, it was an amazing environment tonight. Um, I think, you know, like again, like we played amazing. I think it was a great road win. But I think we're just going to uh, kind of wash it and get after the next week. It's now 5-1 and one on the year. Last night, Hewitt Trustville bounced back from that loss to Hoover by crushing Huffman 49-8. The Huskies scored on all seven possessions in the first half. Peyton Floyd, as efficient as it gets, 13 of 14 for 186 and five touchdowns. All in the first half, the Huskies will go to Thompson next week. That'll be one to watch. All right, coming up next, we'll look ahead to next week's Game of the Week. What a job John Cooper has done with the corner Yellow Jackets. Last night on the road against Fultondale, the Jackets scoring early and often on the Wildcats. Gavin Brown takes the handoff, explodes up the middle. That's the first score of the game. And then how about getting some guys out in space? Landon Peterson passes to Brody Dunlap, who has separation and plenty of green grass in front of him. Corner went up 13-0 and goes on to win 44-6. The Yellow Jackets 5-0 for the first time since 1980. So next week, the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week will be a corner. And I'm not sure if Friday Night Rivals has ever been a corner before, but this is a great matchup. Taking on the Northside Rams, it's a 4A Region 5 game. It'll kick at 7 o'clock on My 68 right after Blitz game day, which airs at 6.30 on My 68. Well, Jack Hayes is big man on campus at Piedmont and a big man in the state record book. Last night, Hayes threw four touchdown passes, three in the fourth quarter, 
as he nearly brought his team all the way back from a 30 to 7 fourth quarter deficit. What he did do was break Chris Smelly's career touchdown pass record. Hayes now has 137. He told me this morning he owes his accuracy to his dad and big brother, former Piedmont quarterback Taylor. I guess just throwing, throwing my brother and my dad when I was younger, just throwing it a lot. I mean, just repetition after repetition and four years of throwing to the guys. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get pretty good at it sooner or later. And tonight in the big leagues, the Cardinals' Albert Pujols hit his 